Padre Pio, at Mass, he would see people's guardian angels. The holy sacrifice of the Mass is the greatest gift that God could give us. Welcome back, everybody. Today is Thursday of the fourth week of Lent. And thank you once again for joining us today. We are going to talk about today the holy sacrifice of the Mass. The Holy Mass and the sacrifice of the cross are one and the same sacrifice, although they are separated in time. There is made present, once again, not the sorrowful and bloody circumstances of Calvary, but the total loving submission of our Lord to his Father's will. This internal offering of himself is identical on Calvary and in the Mass. It is Christ's oblation. Did you know that? The, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is the greatest gift that God could give us. Father Fernandez is pointing out the teaching of the Church that the Mass makes present the sacrifice of Calvary in an unbloodied manner. What would you give to have been at Calvary over 2,000 years ago? Imagine you step into a time machine, hit 33 mm -hmm. AD, spin around, come out, and all of a sudden, what do you see? You see your Savior, Jesus Christ, on the cross. You see the Apostle John and Mary, our mother, there be at his feet. And you see redemption being won before your eyes. What a privilege. Now, we can't do that, right? We don't have a time machine. And my math is a little off. It wasn't quite 2,000 years old. But you get the point. But what happens is that the holy sacrifice of Calvary is made present upon the altar every at every Mass. This is what is happening. This is the great mystery that unfolds before our eyes, and it has infinite value. Mm -hmm. It actually reminds me of a conversation that we had last night at the supper table. I have these images of uh, the Passion of Christ, starting with, um, you know, Jesus coming into Jerusalem on the donkey, and then, you know, the Last Supper, and it, it, it's sequential, and it ends with the crucifixion. And anyhow... Um, we were talking about, you know, the location of Christ's crucifixion and how you can still go and you can touch the rock on which the cross was. And my daughter was like, we can go where Jesus walked. You know, she's five years old. And I was like, yes, you can. But you know, how much more beautiful is it, is the Eucharist really receiving his body and his blood, soul and divinity at mass? You know, or even going and worshiping, worshiping him at adoration just five minutes away at our cathedral. You know, I just feel like we are so privileged. Right. So the rock doesn't come to us, but the person who was upon that rock is made present to us in the mm -hmm. sacrifice of the Mass. Are you at Mass with the same dispositions that Our Lady had on Calvary? Do we realize that here it is, the presence of the one and the same God and the consummation of the same sacrifice? So this really caught my attention. I have never thought about the, the disposition of Our Lady at Calvary and asking myself the question, do I have that same disposition when I go to Mass? It's, I've never really thought of this. And so, I, and so much more, I think, could be said than what I'm just going to ramble because this is more spontaneous thinking offered to you. But, you know, before Our Lady's eyes was great sorrow. Yet at the same time, she saw her saw the hope of mankind. There, Jesus, she saw the source of her love and her faith. I, I think, what was Our Lady not doing? Mm -hmm. She was not indifferent. She was not shuffling her feet thinking, when is this all going to be done? Mm -hmm. She wasn't thinking about the French toast in the oven that needs to be done before the company comes by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or the big Easter celebration that's going to be happening. She, she wasn't at Calvary mm -hmm. to make social connections. She wasn't looking around to see where are my friends. Mm -hmm. What's so and so wearing? What is so? Wow, they got new glasses. Yeah, can you can you now connect this to our experience at the mass, mm -hmm. where these are so often the little preoccup preoccupations that distract us. Mm -hmm. So what do we need to do? I think we need to have a total revamping of how we participate in the Mass and asking Our Lady to give us her heart when we participate. St. Alphonsus Liguori says, At Calvary there was two altars. One upon laid the body of Jesus Christ, and the second laid upon it the soul of Mary. 
He says what Jesus suffered in his body, Mary suffered in her soul. Mm -hmm. And he takes us even further and says that when they put Jesus in the tomb, in that tomb, there was one body and two hearts. The body of Jesus, the heart of Jesus, but why two hearts? Mm -hmm. Well, if you can recall when Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And then what do we know about Mary? Well, when the angel showed up and the shepherd showed up, what did she do? She treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So what was her treasure? Jesus. Where was her treasure? In the tomb. Mm -hmm. Where was Mary's heart with her treasure, which was Jesus in the tomb? So one tomb, one body, two hearts. In each Mass, there is offered to God the Father an infinite act of adoration, thanksgiving, and reparation, quite independent of the specific dispositions of the people attending or of the celebrant. This is because Christ is at once the principal offerer and the victim who offers himself. So a key point here is, well, if this is the infinite offering and sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, how come we're so disconnected from what's happening? That's just not my experience, somebody might say. Well, it's because our dispositions are off. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we haven't prepared ourselves to go into the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Now, if you want to get some tips on how to prepare your heart to go into the Mass, I've done a whole other video. I'm going to link at the end of this video about that. But some things that just come to my mind is, are we praying during the week? Because our daily prayer, which is our encounter with Jesus, will help us encounter him in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Mm -hmm. Regular participation in the sacrament of confession that will prepare our hearts, dispose our hearts to receive grace. Okay. I had a wonderful conversation. I didn't tell you. somebody. I talked to somebody uh, this morning. And they were reminding me on the phone, what is grace? And they quoted the catechism, I believe, 2021. 20, grace is help from God. The help that God gives us is grace, and so we can dispose our hearts to receive this grace. But the key is we've got to dispose our hearts. We have to cooperate, prepare that place, that dwelling place in our heart for God. Amongst others, we have the help of the angels, who are always present there in large numbers, to give honor to this holy mystery. If we unite ourselves to them and their intentions, we must indeed receive much favorable influence from their company. The choirs of the church militant unite and join in with our Lord in this divine act, in him, with him, and through him, in order to win over the heart of God the Father and to make his mercy forever our own. It just makes me think sometimes like I really want our children to enter into the mass. And so during the Holy Holy, you know, I've, we've, we've talked about this, how different saints have talked about that. During the Holy Holy, a bunch of angels come and they come around the altar. And I'll just say to the kids, I'm like, did you feel their wings flutter on your cheeks? You know, just to, just to make it a little more, you know, alive for them. And even just... I, I just want our children really to enter into that moment of consecration and how special it is, you know, hearing the bells, smelling that incense. You know, a lot of churches are now incorporating these things again, whereas there was a time when a lot of that was removed. And I think it's really important because we are, um, you know, people with senses. And so all those things really help us enter in. Yes. And th that quote was from St. Francis de Sales. I, I think about a story of Padre Pio where he said that at Mass, he would see people's guardian angels standing around the altar. Some of them standing happy, some of them standing sad. And he said the ones that were standing around the altar sad were watching over people who brought no intention into the Mass. And when I read that, I thought, how often has my guardian angel stood sad mm -hmm. at the holy sacrifice of the Mass? And here we have St. Francis de Sales saying, unite your offering to the holy angels. So that's something very practical that we can do. My recommendation is do that in the offering. Offer your intention to your guardian angel and to the other choirs of angels that, will be pre that are present at the Mass and unite that to them saying, offer it on my behalf to Jesus, who then offers that intention on our behalf to God the Father. Something very practical.
Mm -hmm. We are so blessed to have all of this at our disposal. You know, I think since starting this series, it's been a few practices. You know, we have our little holy water font at yeah. the front of our house ding, now. Ding, ding, ding. So all of us are mul <laughs> blessing ourselves multiple times a day. And even just, you know, the video about um, the, the one day all about guardian angels and really seeking them and their intercession for us because that's what they want to do. They want to help us and bring us closer to Christ. And even before we turned on the cameras today, we, we always have a little prayer and we've been asking or I've been asking our guardian angels intercession to inspire us to say something that would be worthwhile to you so these are just we're sharing this because it's just practical and maybe mm -hmm. you can start up applying these kind of things in your own life so mm -hmm. hope you're blessed by the thoughts on the holy sacrifice of the mass share with us what stood out to you and why in the comments below share this video if you feel it's been a blessing and we will see you tomorrow